the committee of the whole. Now come to order. The clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Shenoweth? Present. Mr. Hayes? Present. Ms. Huth? Here. Ms. Pat? Present. Mr. Otto? Present. Mr. Whalen? Ms. Wyman? Here. Mayor Satterthwaite? Here. And um, Mr. Whalen called uh, this morning and uh, he's recuperating from a uh, recent hospital visit, so he's not going to be able to join today. Are there any additions to the agenda? If not, we'll have approval from the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, Mr. Hayes, you have a short staff report, if you don't yeah. mind. Okay, good. Um, <coughs> for those interested in the uh, mixed office residential um, zoning district uh, along the Green Street corridor and in that area, there is an open house for the design guidelines. That'll be 5.30 to 6.30 Thursday, June the 3rd, not this Thursday, a week after that. Uh, as I said, 5.30 to 6.30 at Lincoln Square Mall. And we'll have the draft guidelines available for review and we'll be accepting comment at that time. Any more staff report? Walton? Tell Fred Schliff to show up at 8:30 tonight, sometime after 8:30, to uh, if we had any questions on the budget. So, thank you. Any public input? Anyone want to speak before the council for a period of not longer than five minutes? Seeing none, we'll continue. Can we have approval in minutes from the previous meeting? Move approval. Second. <coughs> You're on now. <laughs> We've been moving and seconded that the minutes from the previous meeting be approved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. We now have a... Uh, Good one. I just wanted to take a few minutes to tell everyone what we've been doing at UPTV for the last couple of years. So I got a little PowerPoint presentation I wanted to present. One of the main things that I did when I first started is we put the big satellite dish on the roof. And what this did is this enabled us to increase the programming at UPTV greatly. The main thing that we utilize the dish for is to receive the Annenberg channel, which is a free educational programming channel that we can pretty much pick and choose the programs that we like and use those on the channel. And I just uh, figured this out a few minutes before the meeting. We have uh, recorded 31 different programs and we have 173 DVDs of those programs and there's about two hours on each DVD, so we're looking at about 340 some hours of programming that we've increased by just by using the Annenberg channel. The DISH also allows us to get feeds from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and we basically utilize that in-house for the fire department. Uh, if there's a program that's coming on, Rex will let me know if they want it and we'll tape it for them. We also did uh, record the Fallen Firefighters Memorial. It's a big it was four hours of programming that we did utilize on the channel, but for the most part, that's in-house. And there are a few public works type programs that if that department wants something, they can let me know and we can record that from the dish as well. Currently, uh, here's kind of a look at our rundown of our programming equipment. We're currently running on five DVD players and five Super VHSs. Uh, there's the rundown of the equipment there, two DVD recorders two Casablanca editors, four DVD players, five SVH players, bulletin board, and our production camera, which is what we utilize to, to produce our own programs. The two Casablanca editors, one is used in-house for us, and the other one is utilized by the public access members. 
I wanted to give a little bit of a rundown of some of the programs that we've been producing here at UPTV. We've been trying to increase that since I've got here. That's one area we've been trying to improve. Uh, this is just a rundown of some of the programs that we've been doing. Uh, profiles, which I'll expand on that a little bit later. Early history of Urbana, we did two parts of that. We j recently did an update on the library renovation. We did a program on the market at the square. We have a program we did called about UPTV, which basically informs the public about UPTV and how easy it is to come in and be a public access member. Did a program in collaboration with Champaign on West Nile. Uh, have done some fire prevention programs with the fire department. Did a program on the aquatic center when they were building that. We've done the last three Martin Luther King celebrations. Did a program on the Delta Connection when we were trying to get them to come to town. I worked with Bob Grewey on the HELP program to uh, run down that program for the public. And then we also did a program on the Urbana Dog Park to let people know about that. Oops. Public access, uh, when we decided what we were going to do to try to improve that, the first thing that we decided to do, and this was an idea that uh, me, Danielle came up with, uh, was to get free membership. It wasn't a large amount of money that we were charging people, but we just still thought it was a roadblock that was there. So we started to give free membership to the public. And that has increased our membership. We had about 20 members before, and we now have 65. So membership has tripled since we've done that. We have two new public access cameras. Uh, we purchased one Panasonic Mini DB cam, which is pictured right there on the upper left. And it was checked out so much that we ended up purchasing a second camera. And we did uh, utilize this new space. The space, it's not new space, but the space over here on the left side. Uh, it opened up, and I jumped on it. We've moved all of our editing and editing equipment into there. So we have kind of an editing suite instead of having everything crammed into the office on the other side. The Urbana Public Television Commission has also grown since I've been here. Um, here's a look at some of the members now. Mr. Hayes is the council member. Member Danielle actually stayed on as a community member. Barb Gladney is an appointed member. Kevin Maxson is a community member. Kathy Jessup is from the school board. And then the, Kathy Wicks is a newly uh, a person that we just added. She's from the library. Dana Mancuso is from the park district. And Greg Bazell is a public access member. So we decided that we'd bring in someone who's involved with public access and add them to the commission as well. So that's the look at the commission now. And our next meeting is June 11th at noon here in the council chambers in case anyone's interested. Looking at outreach that we've done, we've tried to make ourselves visible at the last couple sweet corn festivals. A couple years ago, we got a booth. And then this year, we were out filming footage with the public access camera and handing out koozies and things like that. We put a couple articles in the eye on Urbana. We had an open house here. We had a public access membership meeting. We also produced a commercial. I don't know if anybody has seen it, but we had a commercial and basically provided it to Insight. And they air it randomly on all of their cable channels. So you can see that at any time. We also did a logo search. We had a class out at Parkland, um, create a bunch of logos. And basically, we put a little committee together and tried to pick which one we liked best. And that, what you see there on the left is what we came up with. Um, it really utilized it to the full extent yet, but that's what we've chosen. Uh, we, on the Channel 19 TV guide, for anybody that has cable, that has the rundown of all the programming, we got UPTV's program listing on that. Normally, you would just see community programming, but we've got all of our programs uh, listed on that. I have to send the information monthly. Uh, we've contacted several organizations. We sent letters and made phone calls trying to get more organizations involved. Uh, we The About UBTV program that I told you about, that was trying to get people involved with public access, uh, we've got that posted on our website now. So if you want to watch it over the web, you can watch it over the web. We also started broadcasting all League of Women voters meetings. So we've been broadcasting that for about a year now. So uh, once a month, they come into the chambers, and we record that, and we play it back throughout the, the next couple weeks. And we also have made several improvements to our web page that I wanted to show you.
you take a look at the web page there, um, one, one major improvement that we have made um, is the program schedule, which is down here on the lower right. Uh, if you look at it now, it says now playing on UPTV, and I don't know why it says Ekinkar, because it should say uh, Urbana City Council, but I guess when I logged into the computer, that might be why it said that. But if you click for the full schedule, basically the day's whole schedule will come up and you can run down the whole day of events. If you click on a program, it'll show you all the dates that that program is going to be on. And you can also, if you click on this week, you can actually look at the whole week of programming on one page. Anything that is yellow is bulletin board and anything else is programming. So you can see we, got, we do have a lot of bulletin board on there still, but we have a pretty good amount of programming as well. And like I said, if you just click on it, it'll run down the whole thing for you there. <laughs> also, on the, over here, right across from the schedule, we do, this is in conjunction with IS downstairs, but we are posting all the city council meeting video on the web now. So anyone that, if they want to watch the city council, they can, we don't do it live yet, but they can, from home, log on to their computer and click on the clips and watch the city council meeting. And it's broken down by agenda as well, so they can find the part of the agenda item that they want, the issue that they're wanting to look at, and they can just click on that and watch the clip. And we've updated it now, so you can see the city council meeting is showing now on the right. So I just updated the page. Over here on the left, if you click on UPTV public access. Here is where all the information about us is at. And we do have the UPTV program that I told you about. And we also have a public access application online. So if someone wants to be a public access member, they can print it off at home and fill it out and mail it in or email it to us or do whatever they want to do with it. Okay, the UPTV Profiles Program. I told you I was going to expand on this. This is a program that we recently started just this year. And what we're trying to do, trying to kind of use it as an outreach tool, but we're going out to local <coughs> organizations within the community, and we're doing little mini video profiles on, on these communities, on these organizations. Uh, there's a list of some of the ones that we've done so far. Girl Scouts, Cunningham Children's Home, Mentoring Program, Crisis Nursery, Pace Incorporated, and our brand adult ed. Uh, one's been airing for several months, and we have another one that's going to be debuting in June. And we plan to continue to try to do those every three to four months and just continue to try to get more organizations involved. And our hope is to uh, get the organizations excited about UPTV, and hopefully they may even start producing some of their own programming, checking out our camera, and utilizing the resource to produce some of their own stuff. With the Girl Scouts, they actually did have a program that they produced themselves and instead of us producing the profile for them we just utilized their tape and put it on the channel and that's something that we'd like to try to do if someone does have a tape that we can use and we can just use their tape instead of us producing all of the programs all the time some additional improvements that we've made the, as I said the city council meetings are on the web and I believe that the HRC meetings are also on the web we have improved our meeting archives <coughs> All the meetings are now archived on DVD, and we have increased the amount of meetings that are on television as well. I believe almost every meeting that is held in the chambers is televised. Uh, Plan Commission, Historic Preservation, Zoning Board, Plan Steering, Human Relations Commission. So I think we've pretty much got all the commissions and councils covered. A new thing that we we're trying to do, we've added a laptop for the chambers. Before, we've always had to check one out, but UBTV now has their own laptop, so it's going to be here in the chambers at all times. So if we have a miscommunication or if someone just comes in at the last minute and wants to do a presentation, we should be able to hook it up and be able to make that work. We also put in a new projector not too long ago. That's what I'm utilizing here, and that's improved the quality of the PowerPoint presentations quite a bit. In the future, we're looking into the possibilities of a UPTV studio. 
Uh, we're looking into a logo inserter, which it would put utilize the new logo that we chose and put it as a bug up in the corner, as you like you see channel three and all the other channels. We'd have our logo up at all times on the channel. We're wanting to make some improvements with the quality of the video for, for the Urbana School Board meetings. Looking into some editing upgrades. Uh, in the future, a couple years down the road, we always got to keep in mind some council chamber improvements. We're also thinking if we can continue to increase programming like we've been doing, we're going to have to in look into a more of an automated system or a hard drive video playback system. And we're also hoping to increase some outreach efforts. And that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Any questions? Getting rid of those crummy lights that we don't like? <laughs> well, we don't even, as you can see, we don't even use those lights anymore. The lighting in here actually isn't too bad. We've had several ideas of some improvements that we wanted to make, but it's just kind of been talked about. One thing that we really wanted to do was change the microphone system. They're on, they're on a yes. voice activation system, which, to be honest, isn't really the best setup because you're talking and your mic comes on and then the audio bounces around and Otto's mic will come on and it just it can create feedback and all kinds of problems so we've looked into possibly putting the microphones on a switch so you can just turn them on and turn them off I don't know anyone who's utilized champagnes chambers yes. but they're on an on off switch and that's something that we've talked about trying to improve sure. and then the cameras in here they still work pretty well but they are getting pretty old so you know we're imagining or assuming that one day they'll stop working, so we're always trying to keep that in mind that where to go when they break and can they still be fixed? Are they too old to be repaired and things like that? Thank you. Ms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jennifer? I uh, wanted Chris to elaborate a little bit on the, um, on the UPTV studio because one of the things that Commission has been working with the staff with is just the concept of um, how, to, how to have people have ac public access and people have jobs they that you know this isn't this isn't meant to be something for people who you know have this as their hobby and they're putting in intensive amounts of you know tens and twenties and thirties amount of hours just for a few minutes of programming and so one of the things that we've looked at is um, creating a studio with live call-in shows mm -hmm. so that it's real time and there's not a pre-production component to it and there are quite a few forums and things that uh, people want to do in discussion forums, et cetera. So maybe Chris can elaborate a little bit on what we're looking at. Um, we're talking as early as <laughs> June, having um, maybe not the call-in feature, but but uh, the studio over here to work in that way. Maybe sure. Um, I recently took a trip to Chicago to CAN TV, the Chicago Ac Access Network Television in Chicago, their access channel, and they have a room slightly bigger. Um, but not much bigger than this room over here, and they utilize it as a as a studio. So basically, we're going to take the space over here and make it into a studio. Uh, throw a desk in there, mount a camera in there, throw in some lights, uh, run some wires back and forth between the, the control room over here, and basically set it up that we can, if we want to do a live talk show from over there, or we can just turn on the camera and go live at any time. So we're looking at utilizing that space as a studio. Danielle said uh, some stuff about a phone-in possibilities, and that's something that we're looking into. Um, could utilize email as well if you wanted to have a community-involved show. You can, people can email questions, and then we can answer questions. We, we're not sure exactly in how long that's going to take to build it, but we do have the plan set out and the cost set out and kind of how we want to situate that room. I might follow up that um, when I was at the NATOA conference in Miami, one of the things that was mentioned was that uh, with PEG channels is uh, some of, in addition to government meetings being actually the most popular thing on PEG channels, um, this surprised me at the time, um, I also heard that uh, shows where um, the mayor or uh, the chief of police, the chief of fire can basically have a, a show where people can call in and ask questions, you know, why did this happen or what what's going on here, what do you, you know, and be able to kind of have a dialogue with the community since television is really um, becoming the media of choice for many people, that and the internet, it's a way to have a, a, a feedback loop with the community 
So um, in addition to members of the public using this, I think instead of having intensive pre-production time where we're putting thousands of dollars of staff time in producing, say, a piece on, on uh, the fire department, which is very useful, we could get some of that same information out just by having a presentation uh, you know, real time with the fire department and then having people be able to call in and ask specific questions. Um, and what we've heard is that the, these kinds of programmings are very, very popular with the community. So. So I'm. Just, if I understand right, it'll be like Urbana's own reality TV programs. Is that yeah, right? We're, we're better than reality <laughs> TV, actually. Yeah. Ratings are higher. But. <laughs> the, in talking, the first thought was to utilize Monday evenings like 6.30 before the meetings and have a guest on from the city staff to talk about a certain issue. And that was the first thought of how we would use it. Great. Thank you. There's um, <clears throat> another capability that was mentioned that um, I think is a vastly underutilized resource, and that is uh, using the council chambers much as the League of Women Voters does for when they talk about a, an issue that's of community interest to have that meeting be here and it's either a panel discussion or a presenter or a combination of the two and um, uh, then people you know can watch that in their homes and I think you know there's so many things that I've seen from uh, the uh, recent example is uh, uh, the urban planning uh, department over at the university brings in a guest speaker and we have uh, you know for developers and city planners uh, a, a lunchtime forum but it's over at uh, the intermodal center where there's no TV if it was held here or in the Champaign Council chambers why well, it could have gone over uh, gone out to the entire community and some very interesting things about uh, the nature of city planning uh, in the recent years and, and what communities have done throughout the United States and Canada. This guy was very knowledgeable and had some really good ideas and it's too bad we didn't record them. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, I, I hope other uh, groups take the lead from the League of Women Voters and uh, we welcome them to have their meetings in here if they've got a topic that uh, they think would be of community interest and we can get it out to the public. Anything else? Yeah, I just have one question. Uh, Friday, when they uh, had the installation ceremony for the labyrinth yes. over there at the, the park, I thought Cindy Pick and Doyle did a, a fantastic job uh, creating that special dance and dedicated it to that particular ceremony. Uh, is that going to be on the... Uh, Yes, it will. Um, we're utilizing the labyrinth footage that I shot on Friday for two programs. Uh, I pretty much documented the process from beginning to end, from when they had the opening ceremony and they, they built the labyrinth and did the landscaping. So we're going to make a, a big program on the whole process, but that'll, that'll take a little while. But we are going to just use the ceremony that was on Friday and play it as a program by itself and just run it on the channel as well. Very good, very good. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Item six. Resolution number 2004-05-012R, a resolution approving the 2004 update of the Capital Improvement Plan for the City of Urbana. Um, we went over this uh, last committee meeting. I didn't have a lot of other comments. To summarize, um, I've added uh, more detail and information in this year's capital improvement plan. Uh, in particular, there's infor information about the brick sidewalk projects that we're, we've just done and that we're planning. Uh, there's uh, a lot of information about bike paths. Uh, bike paths, we have about seven or eight projects, active projects currently on bike paths. Um, one thing about this year's project work has already started, the map on page 27. 
Uh, the slurry seal work was completed last week. The Oakland Avenue work is underway. Uh, the MFT work, the resurfacing work, it was bid today. And the uh, Goodwin Avenue work, I believe, is uh, reconstruction is out to bid. Now, of course, those projects were ones that were already in uh, the FY04. They were already budgeted. And uh, other than that, I don't have any other comments. I was just going to take any questions that the council may have about the, about the plan. Uh, about two weeks I'm sorry. about two weeks ago or the last time we went over this uh, mr. Gray mentioned that there were some projects that we were waiting from the state to find out about uh, funding for and I think one of them was uh, Un race Street um, just south of University Avenue and I think there were some other programs or projects as well I'm wondering if you've heard back from the state regarding funding for those issues um, no I have not. Uh heard anything recently. I don't think there's been anything recent uh, on any of those. Thank you. Ms. Jolly? I had a question and looking through, um, I, I may have missed it because there's there's so much here in the spreadsheets, but um, I know that we had discussed, I guess when I first got on council, the fact that um, the uh, the bathrooms in the in count uh, in City Hall are accessible, but the but to actually get into City Hall, it's very difficult for someone in a wheelchair to get inside City Hall. There's not doors that uh, that open automatically like there are in many of the new newer facilities. Um, and I wasn't able to locate that anywhere in our capital improvement plan. Is there? And I guess this is looking at a projection of 10 years or so. Is there uh, plans to render accessible our City Hall? Uh, I'm not sure. I would need to talk to Bill and Pat Paletti about that. But generally, the building work is not shown in the capital improvement plan other than there's some annual maintenance that's shown, but like the library project or any major expenditures, I think, I think are in a separate fund. But I can ask that tomorrow when I get okay. to the so what, works. Do you, Bruce, do you know what fund that might be funded out of? Well, it wouldn't be capital improvement plan, as okay. Doug, Doug had mentioned, um, but we but we do not have such a project in our building fund it's plan either. Building fund plan. Uh, which is a non-narrative, except for the financial plan, there's some narrative on it. It just shows up as a uh, as a fund. Primarily, the only projects in there are well, the big projects that are in there are the library. But, but, uh, uh, we do carry $45,000 a year that we use for improvements and repairs to existing buildings. Um, I don't recall that discussion, but if we had discussion on that, we could look at it. Okay. Yeah, this is something that I, I think I raised after hearing from uh, a, a member of the Cable Commission who wasn't able to get inside the building. Um, and then there was also a, a member of the public who's with a local organization who wasn't able to get in without assistance. But um, I think it was about three years back. Do you happen to know if the library, uh, the the ramp going down to the library, if there's a, they're going to be like a, a button to push an automatic door there? I don't recall. Okay. But that also so would Fred be will in the be here shortly, so we'll ask Okay, him. we can ask with the mm -hmm. library. Okay. That was my only question. Any other comments? Is not a resolution being in order. I mean a motion. A motion being in order. I move to send this to council with a recommendation for approval. Second. second. Move and second that this resolution be sent to council with a recommendation for approval. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that I think it's great to see continued work on the street skates program and on the downtown plan, um, really building on the successes and the announcements that, um, and the work that Ms. Chenoweth and Ms. Huth uh, have done in, in developing, helping to develop the downtown plan as well as the city resolution. Uh, things like uh, items like a listed third, uh, third item from the bottom on page three, the street, streetscapes work to include bump outs at Main Street and Springfield Avenue, other work like on Broadway, uh, Broadway Avenue, Actually, that's 2009, but this, the work on Main Street in Springfield is scheduled for as early as next year. I think that's really good. I think we've got some great successes, especially downtown, and that this work will continue to add to those success, successes and continue to add energy. So I appreciate uh, public, uh, the Public Works Department, um, including that 
in this plan and including um, continued work, especially if, um, this year and next year in, in helping that to continue. Thank you. Ms. Janowit. Yeah, I just wanted to praise the plan, particularly um, for members of the public to know the number of bike paths that we're taking on in the very near future. Florida Avenue bike path has been moved up from 2012 to 2006 with this plan. Um, and we're looking at the construction, I won't list all of them, but eight active bike path projects um, in the very near future. So uh, we just passed our Green Waves and Trails program, uh, our plan, and that included a pretty extensive trailway system and the city of Urbana is doing its part to, to implement that plan. No other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Passed. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Doug works really hard on the CIP every year. He does a great job. He does a great job. <laughs> item 7, we have two items for the Traffic Commission. Ordinance number 2004-05-057, an ordinance amending Schedule A of Section 23-62 of the Urbana Traffic Code increasing state speed limits in certain zones. Follow up. <coughs> First ordinance that you're looking at is the is a recommendation from the traffic commission to adjust the speed limit on uh, Filer Road south of Windsor to from Windsor to the city limits uh, to be posted at 45 miles an hour. Uh, currently, that's not posted, which state statute says it's 55 miles an hour. Uh, Joe Smith did his uh, traffic or speed study out there, and the average speed was. 45.6 miles an hour, and the 85th percentile speed was at 52 miles an hour out there. So, uh, they're, based on that study, they're recommending posting that at 45 miles an hour. Can we take these omnibus and pass them on? <laughs> sure. Okay. Item B, ordinance number 2004 05 058. Ordinance amending Schedule J of Section 23-183 of the Urbana Local Traffic Code prohibiting parking at all times on certain streets. Summer Drive, Maple Street. Uh, some, Summer Drive uh, was requested by uh, University Construction to look at no parking along there because of the high truck traffic loading on that uh, that stretch of road that's west of Lincoln, between Lincoln and the bridge crossing the saline. And uh, the traffic commission looked at that and uh, felt that it was recommended that no parking be uh, posted on both sides of that street. Uh, we got the new concrete batch plant there on that side also. And so we've got quite a lot of heavy equipment truck traffic there that warrants that parking, uh, no, po no parking designation. The other area in that ordinance is Maple Street between Michigan and Avenue in Pennsylvania and the Oil and Chip Street, uh, gravel shoulders, it's narrow, and uh, based on the evaluation that Joe did, the uh, traffic commission recommended uh, no parking on uh, the east side of that, allowing vehicles to pass without getting off into the gravel and uh, turning the shoulder up. Not a motion to be ordered. I move to send the, these two to council with the recommendation for approval. Second. The moved and seconded that these two ordinances be sent to council for approval. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it passes. <laughs>